Yeah. Michael, the fight over Mark Furman's racist audio tapes takes center stage in this episode. In your opinion, should the tapes have been admitted into the trial? I think they should have been admitted, Maggie, and I say that because they go to potential motivations of those who are conducting the investigation. It was clearly a hard decision for Judge Ito, but if he had denied the tapes and if O.J. had been convicted, there is no question that would have been at the top of the list of reasons for an appeal by the defense, that generally evidence is admissible and testimony is admissible if it's considered more probative than prejudicial. Now, obviously, there's a prejudicial aspect here because it's really inflammatory. It talks about race. It uses the N-word repeatedly. But it's also probative in the sense that one of the key investigators to the crime clearly has some kind of racial animus. Mm -hmm. And at least based on what he told the screenwriter, he had not treated African Americans fairly, and you could say much worse than that. So uh, I think it would have been hard for Judge Ito to not allow any of that to the jury. Yeah, what we heard from Furman on those tapes was completely vile, yet he was fined only $200 for perjuring himself, and he had to serve three years probation. He then retired from the LAPD after the case. Are you surprised that, given the claims to what he says he did on those tapes, that he wasn't reprimanded more? You would think that he resigned, and, and so his career ended in terms of law enforcement, so that's a consequence. But you're right, given how often he used the N-word during those recordings and that he had earlier testified in the OJ trial that he hadn't used that phrase, at least in the last 10 years, it certainly raises the question of how is this not perjury? Now, he would argue, and I think he has argued since then, that his use of the N-word was a form of exaggeration to make his stories more compelling so that it was more likely the screenwriter would write a screenplay and that it would sell well and that he would receive, I believe, $10,000 in payment so that he had some kind of financial motivation to exaggerate what he had said. But that doesn't really get around the fact that he used the word and used it, as you mentioned, Maggie, repeatedly in a terribly vile way, uh, among other things that he said, right? It was more than just the N-word. It was alleging that he was corrupt, that he abused African Americans, that he set up crimes. I mean, you're right. The fact that it was only a slap on the wrist, I, I think part of that speaks to the fact that the options of going after him are fairly limited at that point. But it, it certainly raises the question of, you know, why is it that if there's one person convicted from the OJ case, it was Mark Furman, but why did he receive such a light punishment? Yeah, it seems crazy to me, especially because he admitted, we're not sure if it's true, but he said, it may have been bravado, that he had framed people in the past. Okay, uh, Michael, for the second week in a row, the idea of a mistrial comes into play in this television series. Now, this time, it's when Judge Ito's wife, her name is Peggy York, is mentioned in the Furman tapes. Now, Furman describes York, who, at the time, was the highest ranking female police officer in the LAPD. He describes her in incredibly crude language. Do you think, Michael, should Judge Ito have removed himself from the trial? I think, Maggie, Judge Ito did the right thing at that point by having another judge decide that question. You know, the, the option of a mistrial was clearly on the table, and Mark Furman was a crucial witness who had made derogatory statements about Judge Ito's wife, Captain York. Clearly, that affects Judge Ito's ability to be partial, to be impartial, rather, and he made that point clear. But I think he did the right move by having another judge assess it. Now, if I'm the prosecution, I think, as Christopher Darden said, or the, you know, uh, the actor playing Christopher Darden said, you know, this is a good thing to have a mistrial. We're probably going to lose this case. Let's redo it a year from now with a different jury, perhaps in a different location. Uh, Marsha Clark seemed hesitant to that idea, but I think in hindsight, at least, the prosecution's best play at that point would have been to encourage a mistrial, would have been to say, look, Judge Ito, you've been compromised. There's no way we can continue this trial. A crucial witness is now said awful things about your wife. And really, that witness should have acknowledged this earlier. And of course, we saw an earlier scene in the show where she didn't acknowledge it when she had an opportunity. But yeah, I mean, a mistrial would have been quite a game changer. And I think there's a good chance OJ would have been convicted a second time around.